Good afternoon, Questers. It's Saturday. It's the 1st of December, and I hope everybody had a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday and that everybody's getting ready for a great Christmas holiday. And uh, so I just uh, want to be one of the first uh, to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Um, I uh, hope you have opportunity to spend time with family and friends and that uh, you um, have an opportunity to reflect on the many blessings that we have uh, being Americans uh, and uh, living in this great country. So anyway, thank you and uh, uh, for tuning in, and, and I look forward to uh, spending some time with you this week. We're, we're looking at replacing a pump this week, and uh, so that's going to be the primary of, uh, focus, uh, and it's the pump that uh, that is used to... Uh, uh, pump out the sump for the forward shower, forward head, and uh, so we're going to get to that and uh, see where, how far we get. Um, it's a tight, tight fit, so uh, we're going to get right to it. All right, so here's the pump in question. Uh, you've all seen this pump in the past. Um, uh, you can see it's half buried underneath. Uh, the floor which I do not have access to I, the only access I have is the access that you see and possibly a little bit from this end over here on this other side of this of the centerpiece here but the, the floor over here and the floor back here does not come up um, it needs to be well I don't know it, we've taken all the screws out but we still can't get it up so I'm assuming that uh, it's sitting on the furniture, sitting on it, or it's glued to the stringers, or a combination of both. So we have to try to get to this pump by going um, underneath, and so it's going to be interesting to see how we uh, get to it. But we're going to give it a shot. All right, we get a little light on the subject, and it looks like we're going to start by. Oh, I guess I'm going to block the camera. I'm going to start by trying to take off the um, this hose here. This is the output side of the output side of the um, sump, the overboard discharge hose. Loosen this up. This looks like it's in there pretty good. Yeah, may need some heat to get that off. Go ahead and. Undo this one also. Loosen it up. It's the intake side. Helps to put the light on the screw head, Mark. So you can see what you're doing. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. The camera angle might not be that great. Alright, so that's that now I gotta remove these screws here where the met where it's mounted let's see if it's gonna be see how difficult it's gonna be to take this hose I mean no it's so bad whoa stinky water in there. Great. Shower sump. Shower sump water. Just came out of that hose. So there's probably more on this side. Let's see what we got here. Off. Yep, there it comes. Yep. More. There. Well, into the bilge anyway. Alright. Alright, so hoses are off. Both hoses to come off pretty easily. That's the overboard hose there. On this slide, if you can see it, there's the nipple for the uh, inboard 
the uh, from the the intake part, the intake side. All right. So now the trick is these mounting bolts. Yeah. There's only one, two I can really see up front, and the rest of them are behind this. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we got. Okay, I got two of the screws out. I got this front one here out. That was obviously pretty easy. And then the one back here wasn't too bad. And now I'm working on this one back over here on the very back side. And it's a pain because it's because it's up against the um, motor housing. And it's hard to get my hand around there and get the screwdriver in there but it's coming it's just slow it's working working it out so my hope is to be able to use the same mounting holes I'm hoping that the uh, new pumps mounting positions are the same so that I can use these same holes that'd be good. that'd be good I don't know what kind of chances of that are, but that's... Okay, I think that's all of them. That's three positions. I think that should should do it. The pump should, uh, yep, lift right up there. All right, so let's see. Let's turn it on the side, pull it out. There it is. All right, well... Old pump out. Uh, disconnect it from the electrical and then new pump in. So I'm going to get the new pump and check to see how closely aligned to the uh, uh, mounting holes uh, the new one is. But uh, yeah, there's the old one. Okay, so the new pump and the old pump are um, similar. But they're slightly different. So the, the new pump has four four connection points. The old pump only had three. Uh, only had three. One, two, and three. The pumps are basically the same height, and they're pretty much the same depth. So it should fit in the space okay. Um, I think that this pump, the new pump, might be a little more powerful, which is not a problem. It's okay. And I think the in and out directions are, are the same. This being the inlet side, the new pump, this being the out, out, out side. Thing is, though, this comes with a, this pump comes with an uh, inline strainer that has to be attached on the up side, on the inlet side, which means I need to. Um, split the hose and put the inline strainer in, which which I wasn't planning on doing. And the hose, I have to gonna have to get the hose down to do it. So, and I don't have uh, any extra wire, um, any extra hose clamps that are the proper size. So I'll need to go get some hose clamps. So that's typically the case. Um, get into this project and uh, it's not too bad but it's not going to be able to be completed uh, because I have to leave the boat to get something else. Uh, so I think what I might go ahead and do is go ahead and complete the electrical connections and get that all set up and get that ready to go and then um, I can um, install the pump because uh, it certainly will be easy to do the electrical connections up here on deck than trying to work down in that space. So that'll give me a chance to get those done and then I can get a couple of hose clamps for uh, the inlet strainer that goes on this one. The old pump didn't have a strainer. So anyway, that's where we're at. Well, I think I remember, I think I told you guys that we had a coolant leak um, in a previous video. And the coolant is, you can see it's kind of a green color right down in there. 
and we've been trying to figure out where this leak is and we've been unsuccessful really at finding out where the leak is. Let's see. Let's see. See down in there or not. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, there you go. You can see some of that coolant right in there. It's kind of a lime green color. So, we've been looking, and uh, at True North out here, to pressurize the system, and they, they couldn't find anything. So this is the engine compartment here. And um, what we've done here is we've taken off the water pump, which sits right which sits right here and we've taken off the expansion tank or the uh, the service tank for the coolant to, to check that which connects here the coolant goes into here goes down into the engine so yeah trying to figure it out trying to figure out what the problem is. I don't think it had any, I don't think there was a problem with the water pump. I honestly don't. But I guess they're going to bench test it and see if there's possibly something going on there. But I tell you, um, this leak issue is really, they got me baffled. <clears throat> there's a couple of, you can see the hoses right there where I'm shining the light. There's a hose below. There's this top hose right here, and then below you can't see. There's another hose down there. And I did find some coolant on top of the bottom hose. So I was thinking that, hey, you know, maybe it's uh, that is the issue. It's leaking out of one of these hoses, but the leak is so small. I can't imagine we lose all of our coolant. But I don't know. I just don't know. So we're still, still troubleshooting that. Here's a, an issue. This floor is all worn away, and even though the subfloor is so thin that uh, it's starting to break. It's just breaking. It's just ridiculous. It's so bad. I can't believe they allowed the floor to go that long. They allowed it just to get like this. It's crazy. That's why we're replacing the floors. All right, so I'm at an impasse here on the pump. I have the old one is out now, completely out, and I've disconnected it from the electrical. Now I got to test the line and figure out which is the hot, which is the positive, and uh, which is the neutral. Um, the wire colors in here, man, there's different colors. I mean, there's green and black. There's purple and black. And there's, it looks like brown and black. I mean, it's just craziness. So I had to put a meter on it and figure out which is the hot. Um, I'm letting that pad dry out. It was wet underneath there, so I'm going to let that dry out before I put the new pump in anyway. And because it's got four mounting spots, going to have to align it and uh, see if I can make at least two of the holes match and then I may have to um, just put in a couple of extra holes I have to screw it in uh, to a spot that doesn't have any holes in it so yeah so that's the name of that tune and then I like I mentioned before I have to get a uh, I have to get some wire I mean a wire clip, some uh, hose clamps uh, for the hose uh, so that I can uh, put the inline strainer, which is this unit right here, it's the inline strainer unit right there. So I have to put that in line down on the uh, in intake side. It's hair and whatnot from getting in there and, and uh, messing up the pump. So that's what we're doing. So uh, so going to have to basically calling a day for today until I can get uh, 
get the, the rest of the equipment that I need. So I'm getting ready to install the pump. And of course, the wires um, here are, <clears throat> well, they're not the typical colors. They're brown and a, looks like a black, I guess. That's black and, oops, where are they? Black and a brown wire. Um, yeah. Yep, I've lost them. Let me go. Black. What appears to be brown here. I'm not sure. It's got another coating inside of it. So it's got two. Um, two insulators. This one doesn't. Anyway, I had to determine the polarity here so I could hook up the pump. And uh, it turns out that this wire here, this brown colored one here is the uh, it's the hot lead this one's the ground I just used my uh, my field uh, uh, field set uh, volt multimeter and tested the wire with the uh, circuit engaged and uh, when I first tested it I had the positive lead on this wire negative lead on this wire and I got a negative uh, DC voltage so that told me right off that the polarity was reversed and that this is the hot, hot lead right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, clean this up a bit and then I'm going to um, hook up the electrical to the pump before I reinstall the pump to the base because it's easier to work with when it's up here. All right, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'll get back to you when I'm done. Just some FYI. If you need to um, strip wires, these anchor wire strippers are like the best. Um, they are quick, easy, and accurate, and uh, they just make it so much easier to strip a wire. You can also crimp with them. There's a uh, couple of crimping dots there, so it's kind of a combination stripper crimper if you want to do your crimping with these. Um, I use a ratchet crimper. Let me show you. Another, another anchor product. It's this ratchet uh, crimper here. And the way this works is you get a perfect crimp each time. You get a perfect crimp each time because um, it will not release until you complete the crimp. So you see that? So it, it, when you put your butt in connector or whatever in there and you start to close this, it, closes but it won't it won't release until the crimp is complete and then it, it releases so this is a great um, great tool um, right here they're not cheap they're pretty spendy but they're very well made and uh, they work real well this one here I think is a double crimper uh, you can get them in the single crimp style whatever but anyway just a public service announcement on uh, I don't I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not sponsored by Anchor. I wish I was. I <laughs> wish I'd be sponsored by somebody, but I'm not. So I'm not getting paid or anything. I just happen to like this uh, this tool. It's uh, very well made, and uh, so, is, so is the uh, stripper. So anyway, that's what I use. Okay, so here we have the... Uh, uh, here we have the uh, butt connectors connected. Um, you can see the positive wire going in there, and then that's connected to the um, to the uh, hot lead. And then this one over here is the neutral, and there's the neutral wire running from the pump. So the pump is connected. I've tested it, and it it operates. So that's good. So now what I need to do is I need to these are these um, butt connectors here are heat shrink uh, butt connectors. When you um, heat them up, there's uh, they shrink a little and then there's some uh, adhesive in there that melts around the connector so that you have a watertight uh, connection. Unfortunately, my um, heat gun, which is uh, over here, this is my heat gun right here. 
it is out of fuel. Huh. Uh, and it's brand new. I just bought it. Haven't used it yet. It's an anchor. And the fuel cell is empty. Now, in reading the instructions, it says um, in the instructions that it comes with a refillable fuel cell. It doesn't say that the fuel cell is full already. So I guess I should have read that. Uh, so I'm assuming that they don't fill it. You have to fill it yourself. So I'm going to have to go find some butane. Uh, that will fill this thing so I can fill it up and uh, use it because I can't I can't seal those um, connections I can't seal these connections down here until I can heat them up and I don't have any other kind of heat gun so I'm gonna go ahead and install the pump um, on the base which is right there and go ahead and get it installed screwed in and then I'll come back later and I'll uh, heat shrink those uh, wires and then neaten up the, the wires underneath. So that's where we're at. But there's pump, new pump, and it's uh, hooked up electronically and I've tested it. It operates. So uh, I'm going to put it on the base and then we'll be good to go. So I'm happy about that. Okay. There's the new pump. All installed. Uh, the um, um, hose lines are reattached to the pump however I'm not done yet I have to install into the pump line I have to, into the intake line I have to install this uh, the strainer uh, which I'm going to install on the intake line which is this line over here on this side back here um, the line goes around and comes up underneath here let's see Let's see it. There it is right there. So I'm going to um, cut this here and then install the strainer in, in, in here. So and once I do that then I'll be completely done. The strainer will be all uh, installed. The pump will be is installed and everything will be done. So tested it. It works. It runs. It's good to go. So Well, Quest for Thunder, that's a wrap for today. Short Saturday. Um, as I showed you, I got the pump out, but uh, need some other components before I can put the new pump in. Uh, also need to determine uh, what the, which wire is the hot wire, and I don't have a tester, <clears throat> so I had to go get my tester. Uh, just somewhat unprepared today, I guess. Beautiful day today. Um, 80 degrees, 1st of December, a uh, nice breeze. It's uh, cooling off now. It's uh, probably in the mid-70s. It's supposed to go down to the upper 50s tonight, and then tomorrow's supposed to be another beautiful day. So hopefully more time on the boat tomorrow uh, to get uh, this pump installed and possibly um, uh, <clears throat> start templating the floor to get ready to remove the sole. Uh, and then uh, I guess when Jean gets back, uh, she, she's away. Um, again, she's uh, serving her country. And uh, when she gets back next week, I think maybe she will be finishing the painting in both uh, forward and aft heads. Uh, probably sometime between now and then, we'll remove the, the uh, toilets from both heads. We've had our system completely pumped out the other day. So it's, uh, it's all empty, and then we had a back flush and everything, so it's uh, fairly clean. And we'll get some DC plugs uh, to fit into the, um, into the uh, waste pipes, uh, and then get those toilets off so that we can get behind them and clean that area really well and uh, sp uh, polish up that fiberglass, make that shiny back there as a part of the uh, whole head reno before we put the new, uh, new toilets back in. So anyway, I'm glad you guys tuned in. I know it was short. Uh, I did get something done, not, not as much as I had hoped, uh, but that's the way it goes on the boat sometimes. So here's wishing you guys a, um, a great rest of the week, and I hope that uh, you'll come back and see us again next week as we continue to work on Thunder and get her ready to move aboard. Um, and uh, again, if you're not uh, a subscriber, uh, please consider subscribing. Also, if you are a subscriber, and you want to keep up with our uh, videos, you can 
hit the little bell icon and it'll uh, notify you whenever we post new, uh, a new video. Uh, so until we meet again, from the crew of Thunder, fair winds and following seas. Bye.